Protect your online privacy today at expressvpn.com slash inside. Hey everybody and welcome back to Inside Gaming Daily for Friday. Bruh. Let's talk more about the upcoming console war. And then we say... Yes! yes! Hey. Okay, lots of people say that console wars are a thing of the past, but regardless, there are two new consoles coming out later this year, and with it, there's a lot of speculation about which one will be better, because we've always got to be fighting about something. Just playing games is boring. Nobody wants to do that. We want to argue with our rivals. So now the master of the PC Master Race, Gabe Newell himself, has weighed in with a clear-cut answer. Yeah, he was recently on TV in New Zealand, in New Zealand, where he's been quarantining for the pandemic, and one of the hosts asked him a million dollar question which new console is better to which he responded simply oh uh, the xbox another host asked him why he said that and gabe added uh guess it is <laughs> he's like i'm not gonna buy either one of these pieces of <laughs> i don't give xbox. i guess console war's over gabe's spoken done yeah war done, war does change we yeah. found out today. <laughs> That's great. Well, well, sometimes changes. Uh, he then elaborated a bit more, not a lot, but a bit. He said, Do you well, I, don't have, I, don't have, I don't have, uh, you know, a stake in that race. So yeah. obviously we, we do most of our development on, on personal computers. So, yeah. but of the two, I would, I would definitely go with an Xbox. Then they moved on to talk about other things that make sense. They're not a tech show. The oh, just really kidding. Good. It's yeah, great. Yeah. So we have a project in Australia and I guess this is a New Zealand version, but they're like, it's like a, a, a new show with a panel, but they, they do do deep dives into topics that I feel like most mainstream journalism doesn't do and they're not sensationalist and not clickbaity. They are like, it's genuinely a good program. Well, now I feel bad. My apologies to Project New Zealand. Yeah, he's been staying in New Zealand during the lockdown and he mostly talked about a free event he's putting on to thank the country for its hospitality. Normal thing. Uh, but obviously <laughs> the part we're interested in in his comments on the next gen consoles, because we are a show about that. And he's right, Valve has always been more about the PC than anything else. So Gabe could be considered an unbiased source here. Frankly, I disagree. I absolutely think he has reason to to be pro Xbox, but we'll get into that. Oh, <laughs> oh okay. it is just a PC, right? I mean, well, that's I a mean, our yeah. Xbox was was partnered with them. It's also that Microsoft yeah. are bringing most of their games to Steam. Like Grounded yeah. just launched this week, yep. early access, but is also on Steam. So it's like he he's benefited too, I think. But Gabe is not the only one to have that opinion that the Xbox Series X edges <laughs> out the PS5 when it comes to raw throbbing power. Uh, on mm -hmm. paper, the console has around uh, allegedly 12 terabytes flops of power over the PS5's measly 10.28 teraflops. Different sources have reported slightly different numbers, but you get the idea. There's, there's that, a little that bit That 1.72 teraflops really goes a long way. Some All right, people have you, said nice it's kind of noticeable. For example, the developer Dynamic Voltage Games is working on a side scroller called Orphan of the Machine for both of the next-gen consoles, and they made comments recently that while the Xbox Series X has the power to run the game at 120 frames a second, PS5 can't. So someone asked what was keeping it from running in 120 FPS on the PS5, and the developer replied, It's possible if I drop the resolution. It's something I may look into, but Microsoft seems to care a lot more about 120 FPS than Sony does, which is why I've catered that feature to the Series X. Well, Sony makes cinematic experiences that sometimes, like, it makes more sense for something cinematic to be closer to a cinematic frame rate, which is not 120 frames a second. Yeah, but a former PlayStation developer also said that the difference between the two consoles is significant. This comes from Chris Grinnell, who worked as a senior designer for Formula One and Wipeout titles at Studio Liverpool. He also worked at Guerrilla Games. In March, he tweeted that, I've chatted to a few devs and they have confirmed the power difference is quite staggering. However, they have said it doesn't mean you can't make good games on the PS5. Sort of like you could make good games on every single other console ever made. Right. It's almost like the development matters more than anything else. That's insane, Brian. Stop. Stop saying things that are crazy, come on. He went on to talk more about the issue on the RDX podcast. Grinnell said, PS5 is not a bad console. It's an absolute beast of a piece of hardware, but it's just a piece of hardware which is slower on numerous kind of paths than what Microsoft has put together. But Grinnell did suggest that Sony had gotten a little complacent in their success. He said, I think Sony has kind of rested on their laurels a little bit. They've got this massive market share and lead and they've done a kind of PS3 is what I've been hearing. Oh, uh -oh. oh no. PS3 card. Shade. Yeah. Was that thing gonna be a thousand dollars? Is that what you're telling yeah. me? Uh, he added that he felt like Sony was caught a bit off guard by the Xbox Series X's specs and suggested that Microsoft has been working a bit closer with the processor maker AMD. Yeah, Xbox boss Phil Spencer has said he felt even better about Xbox Series X after watching Sony's PS5 hardware specs reveal. Awesome. 
That's not to say that the PS5 doesn't have its strengths. Its high bandwidth SSD has been talked about over and over. It's allegedly got a raw throughput of more than double that of the Xbox Series X's drive. Keep going, I'm almost there. That yeah. joke is always funny, Brian, but it, it's so Thank much you. better coming out of a laptop where we can't see you, or this just machine yeah. is just like, Keep going, I'm almost there. <laughs> oh like any object in my house could just sprout off at any moment and be like, I'm going. Now I know while well, you yeah, Sony has also talked a lot about drastically reduced loading times and shown games like Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, which they said wouldn't be possible on earlier gen consoles. Mm -hmm. I feel like people aren't as hyped about that game as they should be because I mean, it I guess the medium cool. is doing the same thing for yeah. the Xbox Series yeah. X, but having two of the same, well, I guess it's just two separate worlds really run at the same time is absolutely something we couldn't do current gen. There's no yeah, way. It seems way more impressive. They've never been able to make a Ratchet and Clank game on any other console before this. <laughs> never. That's this right. is the first time we can get those bar <laughs> physics down. So Sony says that their fancy SSD will result in larger game worlds loading faster than ever before. And they said that could change how developers approach things like balancing visual quality and performance to level design. Yeah. They're big fans of SSDs. Don't even try, Brian. No follow-up. No, I wanted to yeah. also Don't even think like about it, yeah. No, that's just, just an idea. Um, but the <laughs> PS5 has its fans too. None other than Epic CEO Tim Sweeney has been effusive in his praise for the console earlier this year. He called it a remarkably balanced device. That sounds like not the best praise though. It's balanced. Uh, but he said it has an immense amount of GPU power, but also multi-order bandwidth increase in storage management. But have you seen the shape of that thing? I too am amazed that it balances. He added the storage architecture on the PS5 is far ahead of anything you can buy on anything on on PC for any amount of money right now. It's going to help drive future PCs. The PC market is going to see this thing ship and say, oh wow, SSDs are going to need to catch up with this. I mean, that's actually really great because from a development perspective, in theory, consoles are holding video games back because they can't run things as well as PCs can. So devs obviously have to limit the way that they make games to function on the lowest common denominator. Obviously that doesn't always work out, but that's the idea. So the better the consoles are, the better video games are in general, including on PC. And that, that quote is actually really exciting for the entire industry, I think. Uh, but yeah, also Epic and Sony have had a close relationship lately. Speaking of behind the scenes alliances, they've been working together with Sony during the development of PS5 and and Epic's new Unreal Engine 5, ensuring that the engine is optimized for the hardware. So Tim Sweeney might, might be a little biased there, just, just saying. But mostly this all shows that each console maker has prioritized different things. Microsoft went for more raw power with the Xbox Series X. Sony went for a super fast solid state drive. At the end of the day, it is a safe bet that both machines will be capable of making great games. So is the Switch, not exactly a beast. Grinnell said he's confident that the PS5 will have a strong first party lineup, especially from the usual suspects like Insomniac and Guerrilla Games. Uh, he added that it's going to be the first party studios that are going to shine and it always is the first party studios that shine until the third parties start to really get their head around things. Until those dumbass third parties finally figure out what the f*** is up. I don't know if that's entirely true either, because we don't always have first party games launch with a new console cycle, and often it's not many. The first party games will definitely use the motion bar thing on the PS5. Right, all the things that everyone else will ignore and that will eventually go away. I guess to mm -hmm. be fair, Ghost of Tsushima and Last of Us Part 2, I think have my favorite uses of the touchpad ever, which the is guitar? playing guitar, which is so cool. That and, wasn't bad. Uh, in Ghost of Tsushima, how you can you can swipe it to like play a flute. I don't remember which game it was, but one of them had a, a part where you could pinch on the touchpad to zoom the map and yeah. zoom out the map, and it was the most awkward. Like, okay, yeah, that's so. Gotta put my fingers on top of it and just like <laughs> move it like this. No. Infamous Second Son had a graffiti mode where you turn the controller sideways and then you shaked it and then you held Hell down yeah, a dude. trigger and moved it around. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> like a circle. So there you go. The Xbox Series X might have the edge in raw power. I just keep reading this whole script as a series of euphemisms. But there will still be good games for both consoles, uh, no doubt. And Gabe will continue to make VR games or whatever because he's a billionaire and he can do what he wants. You should not make any video games. Uh, what is Portal? So who wants to who wants to throw a party for America with me for hosting us during this pandemic to thank them? I would love to. We're going to Party oh, yeah. City. We're, we're party cups. <laughs> I'm gonna bring hot dogs and buns. I'm gonna bring good vibes. All right, oh. thank you everybody. Have a good weekend.
Bye. Bye. <laughs> Just signing off now. Let's talk about two subjects that always go great together. Video games and current events. I thought I was going to say Ooh. peanut butter and jelly. It's also very good. I've actually never had one. What? what? So they've been mixing more than ever lately in the aftermath of George Floyd's murder at the hands of Minneapolis police. His death ignited worldwide protests calling for racial justice and policing reforms. 